friends in today's session we would like to solve a problem based on stress transformation if you read the question question is at a point in a body the stresses on two mutually perpendicular planes are 35 newtons per mm square tensile 15 newtons per mm square tensile the shear stress over the planes uh, is 9 newton per mm square find the magnitude and direction of the resultant stress on plane making 40 degree anti clockwise angle with the plane carrying the normal stress 35 newtons per mm square so we have to find basically the resultant stress on a plane making 40 degree angle with the plane carrying 35 newtons per mm square so this is a very similar problem we have discussed last time so before going for the actual solution initially what we shall do is we'll draw the entire problem in the body the stresses on two mutually perpendicular planes are 35 newtons per mm square and 15 newtons per mm square now they are saying two mutually perpendicular planes so these are two mutually perpendicular planes we have since the angle is made with uh, 35 newtons per mm square i would prefer drawing uh, this 35 newton per mm square over here because with respect to 35 newton per mm square plane only the angle of inclined plane is given to us this plane carries a normal stress of 35 newtons per mm square so obviously this will also have same normal stress here now the other stress acting on the mutually perpendicular plane is 15 newtons per mm square tensile again so the other mutual perpendicular plane is the horizontal plane so i'll draw it here so this is going to be 15 newtons per mm square and obviously here also will be the same now the shear stress also they have given here so we have shear stress of 9 newtons per mm square so as far as shear stress is concerned the shear stresses are going to act on this particular plane in this particular problem they have not mentioned anything about on which plane we have a clockwise shear and which plane we have anti clockwise so we will take for simplicity anti clockwise shear stress here and this plane carries a shear stress like this and similarly this plane also will carry shear stress like this and this plane will have so we got normal stresses and shear stress. the value of shear stress they have given as it is 9 newtons per mm square so obviously this is also going to be 9 newtons per hour. since they have not mentioned any particular direction of shear stress we will take the anti clockwise acting on the vertical plane and the clockwise acting on the horizontal plane they are complementary to each other here this is nothing but sigma xx and this is nothing but sigma yy this plane is vertical plane so it is the vertical plane is perpendicular to x axis if i show you here this is x axis you can say like this so this plane is perpendicular to x axis so this is x plane and the shear stress is acting in the y direction so this is shear stress acting on x plane y direction and this is the shear stress acting on this plane is perpendicular to y axis so it is y plane so shear stress acting on y plane in x direction here shear stress will be same value here 9 newtons per mm square this is sigma xx this is sigma yy like that. So we have got the required information. Now what he is asking is we have to find the uh, direction of resultant stresses on the plane making 40 degree anti-clockwise the plane carrying normal stress. So this is the vertical plane carrying normal stress 35 newtons per mm square. So we want to have a plane inclined to this. This is the plane. So if you look at this, this is a plane inclined at angle 40 degree in the anti-clockwise sense so this is theta where theta is equal to 40 degrees anti-clockwise sense you can see here now we have to find out the normal stress the normal stress sigma normal the shear stress tau s and the resultant stress acting on this particular plane that is sigma r this angle psi so in this particular problem we have to find out the normal stress shear stress magnitude of resultant stress and the angle now we have converted the entire problem given in the word format to a diagram which represents the various state of stresses acting on the point so our first step is going to be compare with the standard expression we have derived earlier and based on that we will obtain the data what are the various data given in the problem that will derive 
that we will find out from the standard expression. So now this is the standard expression we have derived. So let's see this given situation of the problem and our standard uh, expression. So if you look at this, in the given situation, the stress acting on the x plane in the x direction that is sigma x x is tensile and having value 35 newtons per mm square. In our standard derivation, sigma axis is again tensile so therefore the value of sigma xx which is tensile is going to be positive 35 newtons per mm so the given situation is same as the standard condition so it is going to be positive suppose if the given condition we have compressive sigma xx is compressive so with, if you compare with the standard uh, expression, we have sigma x6 tensile. So the compressive would be negative. But since in actual situation, in the standard situation, both are same direction, we will have sigma x6 is positive. Similarly, sigma, sigma yy also you can see here, which is 15 newtons per mm square is tensile. And in the standard case also it is tensile. So sigma yy is also tensile that is positive. Positive 15 newtons per mm square because it is tensile. Now shear stress, in the given situation of the problem, they have not mentioned anything about uh, the direction of shear stress. So we will always take the direction of shear stress same as the standard situation. So we have taken it as what? It is acting on the vertical plane in the anti-clockwise sense because it will rotate the element in anti-clockwise sense. Here also we have taken the same. So we will have tau xy as positive the value is 9 newton per mm square. This is again anti-clockwise sense with respect to vertical plane. Now, the third, the fourth thing is the angle. In the standard situation, the inclined plane is making anti-clockwise angle theta with vertical plane. In our situation also, it is anti-clockwise with angle theta. It is mentioned. So, theta would be positive again. So, plus 40 degrees because it is anti-clockwise. Okay. So, we are able to get the required data by comparing with the standard expression. So we got the required data for our problem. So now with the help of this data, we can find out the value of normal stress, the value of shear stress, and the value of resultant stress on inclined plane. So let's do it. So therefore, the value of normal stress on inclined plane, that is, you see, sigma normal, so you can see the expression so sigma normal is sigma xx plus sigma yy by 2 plus sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 cos 2 theta plus tau xy times sin 2 theta. So we will use same expression. So let's substitute the values. So that is sigma xx is 35 sigma yy is 15 divide by 2 plus sigma xx is 35 minus 15 divide by 2 theta is 40 degrees so it is cos 80 degrees now tau xy is again 9 newton per 9 times sin to theta so sin 80 degree again so if you substitute the corresponding values so the value of normal stress you will be getting around 35.599 newtons per mm square. Similarly, we can find out the value of shear stress on inclined plane. So you can see the expression for shear stress. It is minus sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 sin to theta plus tau xy cos to theta. So, we will follow same expression. So, if you substitute the values, this will turn out to be sin 80 degrees. If you substitute the values, so sigma xx is 35, sigma yy is 15 and theta is 40 degrees. So, it is going to be 35 minus 15 by 2 sin 80 plus tau xy is 9 into cos 80 degrees. So if you solve this, you will get the value of shear stress on inclined plane will come as minus 8.285 newtons per mm square. Now the next part we have to find is the resultant stress. 
the resultant stress which is sigma r we wanted to find out the value of resultant stress sigma r and phi that is its position so therefore the value of the resultant stress sigma r and its angular position that is angle phi so you can see the expression what we have for value of resultant stress is sigma normal square shear stress square square root and then phi is tan inverse of sigma shear and normal stress. So same way we can find out here sigma r is going to be sigma normal square plus shear stress so that is going to be if you see the normal stress we got as 35.599 square plus shear stress we got minus 8.285 this and if you solve this the value will come as 36.55 newtons per mm square so resultant stress on inclined plane is 36.55 newtons per mm square and singular position phi is going to be 10 inverse of shear stress by sigma normal that is going to be negative angle minus 13.10 degrees i hope it is clear to all of you we shall take some more example to make better understanding out of it thank you very much